The last time I did this, it was one of the hardest challenges I've ever done. And we were so close to a Super Bowl win. And I said if we hit 2,000 likes on that video, I would do another zero overall rebuild. And uh, we definitely hit that. So today, we are gonna try to finish the job and win a Super Bowl in a few seasons with this team as our starting point. With only draft picks to build it. So, uh, <laughs> get a drink, get a snack, get whatever. Cause this is probably gonna be a long one, but it should be very fun. And because we so easily hit the like goal on the last one of these I did, if we can get to 2,500 likes, which we also easily hit that on the last one, so maybe I should set it higher, but I won't. But if we can get to 2,500 likes, I will do another zero overall rebuild. But for this one, let me know what kind of challenge I should do with it. Whatever the most liked comment is, I will probably end up doing. And if I pick your comment, use it, I'll give you a shout out. Y'all know the drill. So let me know any fun zero overall rebuild ideas y'all have because I really love doing these and I know y'all enjoy these too. So again, 2,500 likes and we'll do that. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already because Madden rebuilds are literally all I do. It'll make you an OG of the channel for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers. And I'm trying to hit 50k by the end of February. So if you know anyone that enjoys Madden rebuilds, be sure to let them know about the channel. But without further ado, y'all know the drill for year one with these zero overall rebuilds. Let's just get to the end of the year and we'll see how ugly it is. All right, well, yeah, that's about right. We finish with 0.4 points per game on offense and 75 points per game allowed on defense. Call me crazy. I feel like if a zero overall team existed, I feel like they would get closer to 500 points per game put up on them. I mean, would they even be able to move? Zero speed, zero awareness, zero acceleration. Like, I don't know. <laughs> but Matthew Wright, zero touchdowns, 41 interceptions, elite stat line there. And you know, Know what? I've seen worse for rushing during these. Negative 117 yards led the team. <laughs> I've seen worse. Sam Ficken was our leading receiver with 197 yards. I'm surprised he can even catch the ball with zero catching. Blocking was not great, but Tristan Viciano did better than some really high linemen I've seen. James Hurst led the team with 157 tackles at linebacker, and then no other stats. Again, I'm surprised players can even tackle with zero tackle. But y'all have seen a zero overall team before. So let's get into the fun part of this rebuild and let's try to make this team good by only drafting. And I think my strategy last time was to just trade back a lot. And I think that's gonna be the strategy again this time. I mean, the more chances we have at good players is probably better than just one chance at a really good player, if that makes sense, like the number one pick. So we'll see what we can do. Oh God, why do I hate myself? What did I do this for? <laughs> I forgot the Saints don't have like any picks? Why do we have three sixth round picks? What did this team do with their third and fourth round picks? Were they in the Sean? No, why would they be in the Sean Payton trade? Who did this team trade for? Hold on, I gotta figure this out. What happened? Whatever, it's fine. I'm stu- It was probably some like draft day overpay trade up like they like to do in the draft for some reason. Oh well, we'll get our picks back from, you know, trading down. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> but here we are gonna be trading down with the Bears, assuming they take this. Wait. Okay, they do. We get two Two firsts, two seconds, and a third from the Bears for the number one overall pick. This is really similar <laughs> to, I guess, the, the Panthers trading up for the first overall pick with the Bears last year, because it was what? Two firsts, a two, a four, and DJ Moore? I don't know if it was exactly that, but something like that. So we get a good amount of value to trade down from number one. Arguably too much, but it, like I said, it was really similar to the DJ Moore trade down. And now we should be looking pretty good in the draft. I probably should have checked if there was someone good I could have taken at number one, but again, it, it's probably better to get a lot of good players than one really good player. Okay, but here in the draft, the Bears have the number one pick. I guess we just kind of made it like real life. I mean, they're definitely getting it a different way here, but they're getting it, I guess. I just had a heart attack. I thought I accidentally, I thought I accidentally clicked Sim to next round. Oh God. Ooh. Okay, I did not think that guy would be available, so I didn't focus Scout the rest of him, but Brian Cunningham, what's his 
speed. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I'll take him. There's a chance he has normal dev. I hope not, but he looks insane. Uh, Brian Cunningham, a deep route, a spec catch, a catch in traffic, a release, potentially a catching awareness, B medium route, uh, you know, four, three, five speed, <laughs> 20 bench reps. Sounds good to me. Hidden dev, 93 speed. Sounds good to me. I was hoping for a little better speed, but we'll take it. Now, unfortunately, there was a really good quarterback available, but you know, he went top five. I don't think it would have been worth taking him anyways, though, because A, again, you know, we wouldn't be able to fill out the rest of this team nearly as much, and B, Will Means actually looks pretty good. Oh, that might be the best quarterback combine I've ever seen. He ran a 4-4-2, <laughs> 20 bench reps, almost a 36-inch vertical. Well, close. He's a straight-up first-round talent. Now, there's a chance he has normal dev. I don't think he would, because he is such an athletic freak, but I've seen quarterbacks that do have normal dev that look like him, but let's hope not. Let's go with Will Means. Hidden dev, 93 speed, 91 throw power. It's always interesting when your quarterback has higher speed than throw power, but both are very, very, very good. We might be cooking here. This is feeling good so far. And now let's see, do we want to get our quarterback a second weapon? Receivers just aren't getting taken. This dude looks really good too. What's his change of direction? Good, elite agility, great excel. Call me absolutely crazy. I feel like the best determining factor for playmaker receivers is the acceleration. If it's great, I feel like they're going to be good. A lot of them, if they have just solid, they aren't usually as good, at least from what I've seen. I don't know if we're even going to take him because there were other receivers later. We already took another one, but he looks really good. It's kind of concerning that he was supposed to go top five and didn't, but he looks good. Ooh, Gordon Benson looks kind of insane. His finesse isn't that good, but he looks really good overall. Should we go with a safety? I mean, that's not the most valuable position ever, but Dextrell Knox looks kind of cool. That's a crazy name. His combine was like good. He doesn't have elite anything though, but he was like top five at least for everything at the combine for free safeties at least. I don't know. Ooh, how about this guy? Ooh, Kasim Duggins might be even better. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about taking safety here. I'm not gonna lie. How about a pass rusher? Eh. I wish I had him scouted. Yeah, I'm not taking a chance there. Should we just go with the number one ranked player still available in Julius Pierce? I mean, I know we just took a receiver, but why not get really good weapons for our rookie quarterback? Okay, he actually probably will have normal dev, but I think he'll be a good enough overall to make up for it. Let's go with Julius Pierce. And he does have normal, but 92 speed, 96 agility. Damn. No dev trait, which is disappointing, but he looks good. And now let's go with Dextrell Knox out of Texas A&M. He looks good. I don't know if he's the best just because his speed isn't anything crazy but he looks good so we'll take him normal dev that sucks okay i thought for sure he would have a dev trait but again i think i think he'll still be a good overall and last pick i'm gonna show let's go with Derek mcdonald he's an agile lineman with elite strength so sounds good <laughs> another normal dev why <laughs> Normal dev linemen are kind of rare, at least the good ones, so that kind of sucks, but I'll make the rest of these picks, or at least most of them, and I will see y'all for the draft recap. All right, well, this was uh, certainly a draft. We actually did pretty well. I, I say I'm trying to be pessimistic. I don't know why I am. We actually did well. I just wish we hit dev traits, bro. Like, <laughs> the fact that we hit three players in a row that are actually good with normal dev really sucks. We only got two dev traits in this entire goddamn draft. Like, my fault, I guess? But Brian Cunningham is very good looking. I wish he was, you know, like 21 instead of 23. But he should develop pretty well either way. 95 spec catch. Damn. So yeah, he's really good. Probably a top five player in the class. I doubt he's the best, but top five for sure. Will Means, better than I thought he would be. He's a 77. I think we'll change our scheme because he is the uh, the opposite of a scheme fit. <laughs> he's the fur furthest thing from a scheme. And I want him to develop. We'll try to find a scheme that makes both of these two a scheme. Julie Julius Pierce, though, is very good, just unfortunately no dev trait. But either way, that's still very good value for the top of the second. I guess borderline mid-second. But yeah, I, I wish he had a dev trait, but he's still good. Dextrel Knox, I am really surprised he doesn't have a dev trait. He only has 60 man, man coverage. That's kind of gross. I figured he would be around a 75, but again, I wish he had a dev trait. Derek McDonald is a 75, and then I took every single one of the rest of these picks. I just wanted to fill out the rest of our D-line, so I took players that had B power moves. Uh... 
it didn't really work out i love how b power moves is only a 72 that makes sense a 70 bruh i mean at least he has at least he has 87 strength would he be a good no he's 267 i was gonna say would he be a good defensive tackle no <laughs> he might be a decent overall there no he's not okay page was also a defensive end but i moved him to defensive tackle because he's what like 312 pounds yeah and then i tried to get one of those like insane blocking tight ends uh this guy is very much not that he's a 66 overall with normal dev so unlucky a little bit towards the end but overall definitely a good draft i tried to fill out as many position groups as i could we didn't get a running back which might be a problem but we'll see but let's get into i guess year one of the rebuild or you i'll just call it year two whatever we'll get into year two and we'll see how the team's looking i mean it shouldn't be too hard to picture it in your head but still <laughs> but here's a look at the team and we are a deadly 33 overall <laughs> but call me crazy i think there's an actual chance we win a game this year you know maybe not now that i think about it but we might get close now should this team win a game uh no we should probably get beat 150 to nothing every game because 90 percent of our roster shouldn't even be able to move when they're on the field but <laughs> we'll see what happens and call me absolutely insane this might just be completely schizophrenic but i'm gonna play julius pierce at running back for year one i'll move him back to receiver unless he's just insane at running back but rookie players never are the only players that do well at running back are actual players that are already in the game which is stupid but something in madden is stupid no way never heard of that before but i think it's more important to have a at least passable run game than a good number two receiver because if we have taylor bertolet or whatever out here getting negative 0.9 yards per carry every run then this offense is just going to be dead we won't be able to do any so pierce at running back should help this offense develop a little better at least i'm hoping because we'll actually have a tiny bit of a run game at least this defense is really rough though i mean <laughs> i don't have much hope for this season in terms of defense we'll see what happens but we literally don't have a corner so that's tough but let's get to the end of the season or i guess we can get to the mid-season and we will see how this team does you know what actually another executive decision here let's put Derek mcdonald at left tackle because that's the most important offensive line and position okay now we're good and let's get to the mid-season point all right well at the mid-season point we are <laughs> oh and seven big shocker there Ooh. okay will means has 1,000 yards one touchdown julius pierce is actually doing pretty well so is brian cunningham damn i i mean i guess he's like the only option pretty much but he's doing really well <laughs> we have zero interceptions on defense that's cool but i mean that's literally all there is for us to do here so we'll just hope for i guess maybe both rookie of the year awards i don't know how easy it is for us to win defensive rookie of the year god i want i want martin smith to get more tackles than james hurst i thought if you put a linebacker as the the number one sub linebacker it'll just play him at middle linebacker pretty much i guess not so i'll i'll move him to middle linebacker it might be too late anyways but let's get to the end of the year and we will see how the team finishes okay well yeah that's that's about what i expected apparently we were so bad that it doesn't even want to show us the division standings i'm guessing we didn't win a game <laughs> yeah of course not but that's a good thing we're gonna have the number one pick again i mean honestly i would prefer to go 0 and 17 next year too which maybe wouldn't create the best viewing experience but if we're gonna build a good team that's probably our best strategy just get as many number one picks as we can and trade them down for as much value as we can but let's see what went right and what went wrong this year oh <laughs> okay that might be the worst stat line i've ever seen for an actual quarterback will means finished with 2,000 yards a 44 percent completion percentage one touchdown and 14 picks yikes and he only has star dev that's cool but he's up to an 80 overall at least hopefully he'll play better next year julius pierce wasn't great but not terrible 700 yards only 3.8 per carry but three touchdowns will means at least added almost 600 yards and a touchdown through the run game so that's some oh brian cunningham didn't finish that good why did our offense like completely change why did we lean on ryan santoso in the second half of the year why why not just go to you know our actual good receiver who has superstar dev by the way why did we start going through ryan santoso what are we doing the o-line was certainly interesting tristan vis uh, he allowed zero sacks why why does a 12 overall do that well that's so stupid james hurst again led the team in tackles with 125 tfls 18 for curry 15 for jones and 14 for lindsey page and sacks a whole three and a half for deshaun curry led the team three for marquez jones zero interceptions on the year that was a season i wouldn't imagine we're gonna win any awards believe it or not brian cunningham was at number four for rookie 
of the year probably would have won it if we didn't start going to Ryan Santoso. Julius Pierce at number seven, Will Means at number 10. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Jack White for the Eagles. There are always some interesting names in this, <laughs> like actual people. Deshaun Curry at number two. Why do we always get number two for awards? Why can't we just win them? Marquez Jones at number four, Martin Smith at seven, Lindsey Page at nine. Whatever, what whatever. This game hates me. But now, let's get into another draft. Wow, we are two for two on Cowboys Chiefs Super Bowls. I don't think I showed the one last year because it's not really relevant to the rebuild, but two years in a row, Chiefs Cowboy. That is the Super Bowl in this game. I love that. <laughs> but here, maybe this is a crazy trade, but we are trading down to number 12. We're getting two firsts, two seconds, and two thirds from the Seahawks. We're taking the Seahawks top three picks for the next two years. And what are they going to do with the number one pick? A defensive end. He looked pretty good. We'll see. That might be good for him. <laughs> God, what do I want to do, though? There really isn't anyone that I'm, like, too interested in. None of the receivers look insane. Rodney Stewart looks good. His deep route is really bad, though. Tresman. That's a name. I've never seen that one before. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know. Honestly, nobody here looks that good. At least not worth taking here. Andrew Bethel looks really good, but I feel like tackles are never worth taking unless they look absolutely insane. Like, I've seen some, like, 83 overall guys, but usually they go super high. Ooh, Eric Williams looks really good. He's not supposed to go until the second or third round though, so we'll... Yeah, I think we will trade back again. <laughs> we'll see. Who wants to trade up? Let's trade down to 22 with the Patriots. I'll make a custom trade that's a little better than that, but we'll trade down with the Patriots so it isn't an interconference trade again. Okay, we'll trade the 12th pick for 22, a 2 and a 3 next year. I'm just using the, the good old NFL draft pick value calculator and it said this was fair, so we'll do it. I don't know if that's accurate. I'm terrible with trade value, so we'll do that. I know usually trades have later picks in them too. I don't care. I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> and let's see. Let's go with Andrew Bethel is still available. Like all the tackles are still available. Why? Do they suck? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they don't look great. Bethel definitely looks like the best one, but you know what? Let's actually go with another defensive end. I know we already have some defensive ends, but they did not do very well. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll take Tresman Tatum. Usually I don't like taking in players like this because they almost always have normal dev, but we'll take a chance. I think he'll be a decent overall. And yeah, normal dev, but 90 strength, 78 speed, 84 excel. Sounds good. We need D-line. <laughs> we need everything, but we might as well take someone that looks good. And let's go with the corner. Let's go with Eric Williams here. He's the number two corner on the board. I don't want to risk losing him. Amazing speed, elite speed. A man, B press, I guess potentially A zone. It's probably a B. Sounds good to me. Probably normal. Yeah, normal dev, but great speed. Sounds good. I'm having a hard time in this draft. I feel like there isn't anyone that looks great, honestly. Chris Baker looks decent. <laughs> His finesse isn't that good, though. And he's a power blocker, and he didn't have an A for power, or he might have. I don't know. There are a lot of players that look good. There's nobody that looks insane, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. You know what? Let's go with another corner. Probably normal dev again, because corners always have normal dev past the first round, but Ben Banks, 442 speed, ran a 436 at his pro day. Can't wait for him to have like 90 speed or something. Um, no, he has great speed. He'll probably have 91. But elite acceleration, A man, B zone. Not the best play rec, which is a little concerning, but everything else looks good. So let's take him. All I need to do is be pessimistic and it'll make the player good. Hidden dev, 93 speed, 94 excel, 95 change of direction. Sounds good. And let's really fill out this O line. We'll go with Chris Baker first. He's 6'4, 340 out of Cal. So not really a scheme fit, but he doesn't have the worst finesse in the world. So. I think he's pretty good. Let's take him. What's with the normal dev lineman? Why am I getting normal dev lineman? I thought they didn't exist. <laughs> Why? This game hates me. All right, and probably last pick I'm going to show. Let's go with Hugh Morrison. Is he a good pick? He has really good strength. Again, he looks kind of similar to the last guy we took, just an agile blocker instead of a power blocker. Can't wait to see normal dev again. Okay, he is hidden. Again, I just need to be pessimistic. Okay, well, here's how we did in the draft. Honestly, <laughs> this one wasn't that good. I mean, it's still objectively good, like 78, 77 overalls are like some of the best players in the class probably, but nowhere near as good as last year. But what we did do is pretty much fill out the rest of the needs on this roster. We still need a center, I think, and I guess a running back so we can move our receiver back to receiver. We don't have to keep playing him at running back, but we drafted Calum Rudd or whatever that name is, Cal Calum, I don't know. He has hidden dev, so he should be a good number two receiver. I kind of thought he would be 
better than a 73, but a 73 is still really good value for what? Well, it's pretty good value for the third round. I want to see, though, were, th <laughs> were there any players I just straight up missed out on? Um, these guys all went high. That's fine. I could have taken Ron Thorpe, but I wasn't really looking for a receiver. Ray Green. I don't really draft linemen very high because you can find so many good ones later, but I guess he would have been a good pick. Eh, there wasn't a whole lot, honestly. <laughs> Early on, definitely, there were some good players, especially corners. But yeah, that wasn't too bad. So let's see how the team's looking heading into year three. But here's a look at the team heading into year three. It's definitely better than last year. Still not perfect, but better. <laughs> we have a 69 overall offense. Nice. 80 or 48 overall defense. I wish we had an 84 defense, but we're getting there. And honestly, the defense looks better than its overall. I mean, really the only player that's going to get any playing time that is a 12 overall is Cameron Nizielek. No idea if I'm saying that right, but probably. Probably not. And actually, a lot of players got star dev, surprisingly. Pretty much our entire D-line last year, and Martin Smith got star dev, so that's kind of cool. I don't know why, because none of them were great, but I'm glad they got it. But yeah, we still have some things we need to fix, but honestly, it could be worse. And I'm trying to start as many, like, non-12 overalls as I can, or at least get some of them playing time. Like, <laughs> should I start Shepard at center? Nah, well, we're already, we're already kind of starting him at wide receiver three. I also put him as a backup for every O-line position, just so when they rotate, it isn't a 12 overall coming in there. I don't know. We'll see what that does. It could mess stuff up, but honestly, I don't know if it matters because we're a 59 overall. But let's get to the midseason point, and hopefully we can get a win this year. We'll see. I'm confident we can. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy for being confident about that, but we'll see. Okay, well, at the midseason point, we are 2-5. and five. Better than, you know, the other two years. Probably better than we should be, but I'll take it. We actually have a pretty good pass offense and a good pass D. I mean, I say good. It's number 18, but that's better than it should be. Maybe our pass offense should actually be decent because, you know, that's that's kind of what our offense is built around, I guess. You know, we have a decent receiving core, a good QB, a receiving running back, a decent O-line other than center. So yeah, having a good pass, pass game definitely makes sense. I don't know why our defense is good though, or at least our pass D. Unfortunately, we have still not hit a dev trade above star other than Cunningham. So, so that's kind of tough. Skill issue, I guess. But still nothing really for us to do at the midseason. So let's get to the end of the year. Hopefully we can keep it up or completely lose every other game. So we end up with the number one pick. But let's get to the end of the year and we will see what happens. I can't remember how long it took us to get good in the last one. I think it was year four we started to do okay. And then year five we did really well. I think that's what I remember. Okay, pretty good prediction. We finished two and 15. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of a good thing. Well, do we have the number one pick? I would hope we do. Okay, yeah, cool. But let's check out our stats this year. Will Means did a lot better. 3,600 yards, 20 touchdowns, 13 picks. Still not a great stat line, but a lot better than last year. One touchdown, 15 picks or whatever he had. So we'll take that. Julius Pierce, we'll move him back to receiver, I think. He wasn't great this year. Receiving was very well balanced. Shepard got 851 receiving yards and five touchdowns. Why? <laughs> okay. I mean, I kind of wish he didn't, but all right. The blocking definitely wasn't great. Chris Baker allowed 16 sacks at right tackle. All right. Alex Hayward led the team with 162 tackles. Martin Smith with 125, 118 for Ben Banks. TFL's 16 for Tatum as a rookie. 14 for Curry, 11 for Page and Jones. And sacks, five for Tatum and Marquez Jones. Three for Alex Hayward, two for Deshaun Curry. Still not great sack numbers, but that's better than I expected, honestly. I thought we would get like total on the year. And then interceptions, two for Eric Williams and Ben Banks, one for Dontrell Knox. So honestly, the stats almost look better than a 2-15 and 15 team. I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I don't know about that. But MVP goes to Jalen Hurts. Offensive player of the year also goes to Jalen Hurts. Defensive player of the year goes to Demarcus Lawrence, because of course a division rival would sign him. Why wouldn't they? Offensive rookie of the year goes to D'Angelo Spain for the Cardinals. Roy Rudolph at number three. Kalem Rudd at number seven. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Alex Hayward. We'll take that. Tatum at three, Banks at four, Williams at eight. So definitely not the best season, but could have been worse. So let's get to our third draft of this rebuild, and hopefully we can really become a decent team, finally. Let me guess, the Super Bowl is going to be Chiefs and Cowboys. No, now that I guess that it's going to be that, it's not going to be that Super Bowl. It's going to be Falcons and Dolphins? No, Cowboys Chargers. Oh, ew. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. Okay, well, here we are, and this is an interesting draft. There 
is a very insane looking corner. If I take him, he's gonna have normal dev. So that might be GG's, but he still looks kind of crazy. Uh, for sure, like, God, I'm really trying to jinx myself. For sure, generational. Hopefully he actually has like an insane dev trait though. William Wharton also looks pretty nice, but I, hmm, I'm conflicted. Should I trade down one spot and pray that the corner doesn't go? Or should I just take him here? Jared Ebner is barely scouted, but he looks ridiculous. Well, Mike Moreland looks even better. There are some good QBs here from what I can tell. Okay, what's the number two team? It is the Packers. They might need corner. Ah, uh, I mean, they need safety, but their corner group isn't bad, but I, teams don't really make picks that make sense here. So they very well still could go for him. Oh, they desperately need receiver still. All right, are we gonna do it? Yeah, we'll take him. Najee Nelson, I didn't think we would take a number one pick, but he looks insane. He doesn't look perfect. His play rack isn't good, but other than that, he looks insane. So welcome to the team, Najee Nelson. Hidden dev, 96 speed. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that pick. And now we could trade this one down if I want to, but we already kind of have picks this year. So I don't know if we need to. Let's see, we don't really need another receiver, even though they do look good. We will need a running back. Some of these guys look decent. I'll probably take one of them later. Ooh, Frank Hobbs in the second to third round. We'll have to take him later too. He would probably be worth it right here. We do need a defensive tackle. Carlos Garcia looks very good too. I feel like D linemen are never as good as they look, but I don't know. William Wharton is still available. That makes me a little worried <laughs> that he's not that good, but he looks really good from what I can tell at least. What about Jose Freeman? Eh, not as good. Well, at least athletically, but his ratings look almost better from what I can see. I don't know. Should I go with the edge? Should I do it? Yeah, sure. William Wharton, probably gonna have normal dev because he did fall, but I think he'll be a good overall. So let's take him. Just kidding. All I need to do is say they're gonna have normal dev and it automatically makes him have hidden. Now it's probably gonna be star, but he looks like an athletic freak. Kind of looks like Antonio Brown. <laughs> Not build wise, but his face. I don't know. That's interesting. And let's go with Frank Hobbs here. I guess it's a little earlier than he's supposed to go, but he looks insane. No elite trait, which is kind of surprising, but great slash good everything. Yeah, he looks amazing. Let's take him. Hidden dev, 92 strength, 75 speed, 82 excel. Sounds good. And let's see, is there a running back worth taking here? I'm curious. I never draft running back because like I said, even if they're a good overall, they will not play very well. I don't know how to scout elusive backs, honestly. This guy could be good for all I know. I have no idea. Ooh, Isaiah Rowe, elite change of direction and acceleration. Not very good ball carrier vision though. We could just take a chance on him though. I mean, why not? Not here, but with the next Brad Oliver. Ooh. Okay, the last thing we need is tight end, but he looks good. What am I doing? Why am I looking at like things we just don't need at all? We have bigger problems on this team than tight end. Ben Beckham, relative of Odell Beckham, I'm sure. Looks just like him. Ooh. God, it's always the players with that face, the broken one, that look really good. JJ Hawkins, 43 bench reps. Now it's probably gonna only be like 93 strength or something absolutely brain dead. His ratings don't even look that good, actually. He has really good power, but like that's it. At least run block power, but I don't know. I think the strength carries. Let's take a chance. Hidden dev, 95 strength, which I mean, that's good, but 43 is close to the all-time record. Like, whatever. And this might be an absolute throw pick. I have no idea. Like I said, I never draft running backs, <laughs> and if I do, they're like a power back, but I like the elite traits. His ratings don't look crazy, but he might have good awareness. I don't know. We'll take a chance on him. Probably not that good. Yeah, normal dev. Okay, I'll take another running back, but I'll make the rest of these picks, and I will see y'all for the draft recap. We'll see how we did. Yeah, that was a, a pretty good first pick. Uh, <laughs> Najee Nelson is an 85 overall. 96 speed, 84 man, 81 zone, 90 press as a rookie. I'm not gonna lie, I've already looked at him. I'm having to re-record this, but oh well. And also 79 catching as a corner. That's kind of crazy. So yeah, that was a <laughs> that was a decent first. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, and even William Wharton is better than I expected. He's a 79 overall. He was a 79 at out, 79 at outside linebacker too. He didn't go up or anything, but I think I saw 
that he is the sixth best player in the class, tied for it at least. So that's a good pick at number 11. I mean, we got two of the six best players in the class, including the best player. So I think it's always a pretty good draft when you do that. Uh, JJ Hawkins looks good too. Very good, actually. 77 overall. We'll take that. I don't know who we're going to play at center. I guess we'll see. God, I don't even remember most of the picks I made here. I forgot to take another running back. I'm stupid. But honestly, maybe I'm glad I didn't because Isaiah Rowe isn't terrible. I wish he had a dev trait, but he is a 75 overall. Frank Hobbs isn't as good as I expected, but he's still a 75. That's not bad. Durham looks good. BJ Golson, a corner, looks very good. Jarius McMillan is better than I thought he would be. He looks kind of crazy. 76 overall with hidden dev in what? The fourth round? Yeah. Tanner Bender looks really good too. This must have just been a crazy draft class. I guess it was because every single player I took was better than I expect, except for Frank Hobbs. That's the only one that I'm like a little disappointed by. And I guess the last two, but I didn't think they would be great. Either way, this was a disgustingly good draft class. And let's see how the team's looking. But here's a look at the team heading into year four. Yeah, I guess year four if we count year one. Yeah, I, I always lose track of what year it is during rebuilds, but we are looking pretty great heading into year four. We're an 80 overall, which isn't like the best, but it's a, a competitive overall, I guess I would call it. Like we're close to being a good team, closer at least. And really we don't have any holes on this team anymore. Our safety duo isn't like amazing in terms of overall and our defensive tackle group isn't the best. Obviously this whole team is very, very young. They're all year three guys at the oldest. So there should be a ton of room to grow on this team. I'm wondering what I want to do with the O-line though. Cause Baker was kind of terrible. What if I start Morrison at right tackle or Hawkins? Who's the better overall pat? Ooh, definitely not Morrison. He's a 64 overall pass protect. How about Hawkins? <laughs> Probably not much better. 68. I mean, that's not great, but I think we'll try him at right tackle. I love the gray background that makes it look like he's a star dev. I mean, he could be, but he's hidden for now. Anyways, I also kept Pierce at running back just because I don't necessarily trust Rowe to do that well. I guess Pierce hasn't done that well either, but at least he's a good overall. So I don't know. <laughs> the CPU must assign Terrace Marshall because I'm not really allowed to do that. I don't want to have to reorder the depth chart again. We'll just leave him. He won't get playing time, whatever. I'll make him the fifth guy. <laughs> there we go. But let's get to the midseason point of year four and hopefully we're doing better than last year, but you never know. Okay, well, we finally have a winning season, at least so far at the midseason point. We are four and three. You love to see it. Now the Panthers are six and one, so we're not leading the division. We're almost in third in the division because the Buccaneers are also four and three. I honestly don't think we will finish with the winning record. Well, let me see. Let me tell you right now if we are. Uh, mm, no. Our defense isn't super great. I mean, the points per game allowed is decent, but the yardage totals don't look great. Our offense is good, so we'll probably be close. I don't know if we're gonna make them though. We'll see. We could finish like nine and eight or something, but I don't know. Do we have any resign? This could be our first year of resignings. Wait, uh, no. It's just a lot of players the CPU signed because we didn't have depth at any positions. <laughs> we do have the fifth year for Brian Cunningham and Will Means. That's gonna be a big decision on Will Means because he hasn't been great so far. I mean, we can't really blame him because we haven't surrounded him with anything, but how is he doing this year? Okay, much better. He's gotten dramatically better each year so far. So I think we'll probably pick that up. I mean, this year doesn't really count for him. I mean, he got sacked 71 times. We quite literally threw him into the fire. It's a miracle he's still alive. So I commend Will Means for that. I think we'll reward him with a $40 million one year, one year deal later on in the season. <laughs> but again, not much for us to do here. So let's get to the end of the year and we'll see how we finish. This could be our first playoff season. Okay, well, before I reveal how we finished in year number four, if you've seen one of these videos before, y'all know why we're here. But if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. If there is one thing I could ever ask you to do, it is take the like one second to drop a like on the video. I know I'm probably annoying with it. I don't care. Please do it. Helps out the channel more than you could imagine. I keep hitting my desk with my controller. I'm a fucking idiot. But yeah, I'd very much appreciate it. And again, if we hit 2,500 likes, I think I said, I'll do another one of these, which I know we can hit that. We literally destroyed that on the last one. That wasn't even the goal, but we still destroyed it. The goal was only what, 2,000, I think I said? Yeah. And also be sure to subscribe, all that other stuff, y'all know. Like, or let me know down below what type of rebuild I should do next, because if we hit that goal, the like goal, whatever the most like common is, I will do that video if we hit the like goal. Why am I having a hard time explaining this? I don't know. But, <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh. I uh, okay. I haven't checked this yet. Najee Nelson has X Fact, which was maybe a little predictable. I didn't know if he would though, because usually if I get a crazy overall player, I get very unlucky with their dev traits. Like I drafted an 82 overall normal dev corner in a rebuild, but Najee Nelson is not the same. He is an 89 X Factor after year one, and something surprising is William Wharton. I'll call him Will Wharton. Also has X Factor. Already up to 90 power moves, an athletic freak. Again, kind of looks like Antonio Brown, which is a little off-putting. But hey, we'll take the X Fact. And Hobbs has Superstar. I mean, that's not X Fact, but that's still very, very good. It's like effectively the same as X Factor in franchise if you're not playing the games. But anyways, in year number four, we finished 10 and seven and we made the playoffs. I'm really surprised about that. And it wasn't even our offense that did well. Our offense kind of fell off. Our defense really came on. Uh, we didn't get that many sacks or takeaways or, and we had a bad red zone defense. So that's weird. <laughs> Normally, if you have good yardage at the midseason, but bad points per game, that'll balance out a little bit, somewhere in between both. But that did not happen here. Our offense stayed about the same and our defense got better. So we'll take that, I guess. Let's check out our stats though. I'm interested to see what happened. Okay, Will Means was very good. 4,100 yards, 28 touchdowns, only six picks, 71 completion percentage. He was nice this year. Julius Pierce still wasn't great. I mean, 800 yards, 3.6 per carry, five. I mean, that's like, eh, I don't know. That's not a great stat line. I want to say it's okay. It's definitely not great though. It's not like Rowe was much better. <laughs> to be fair, his average is brought down because it looks like he was our goal line back for some reason, even though he's not a power back. Or well, I think he was a decent, no, he's not a power back. Okay, never mind. I don't know. Ooh, okay. Brian Cunningham led the team with 1,200 yards and nine touchdowns, 1,000 on the dot for Rudd, McMillan with 777, Roy Rudolph was decent at tight end. The blocking other than Derek McDonald was very good. And then Alex Hayward led the team with 123 tackles, 115 for Noah Graf. Isn't, the, isn't there someone named Noah Graf in real life? I feel like there is. But 15 TFLs for Hobbs led the team, 14 for Wharton, 13 for Tatum, and Sachs, again, were pretty terrible. Five for Wharton led the team, despite being, what, an 86 X Factor, 85 X Factor, but 86 with morale. Maybe should have a few more than just five, but I don't know. Four and a half for Hobbs, three for Jones, and interceptions, two for Banks, and then one for four players. Are those the first interceptions we've had during the, no, we had some last year, Never mind. But MVP goes to Dak Prescott. Surprisingly, no Saints up here. Our quarterback didn't make it, unfortunately. CD Lamb wins Offensive Player of the Year. Shocker, a Cowboy wins it. Who would have guessed? Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons. Shocker, a Cowboy wins it. Who would have guessed? Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Roderick David or Davison of the Giants. McMillan at number five. Isaiah Rowe at number nine. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to William Wharton, surprisingly. I guess just the TFLs carried because he didn't do that much in terms of pass rush. Frank Hobbs at number two. I almost wish Hobbs won it, honestly, so he would get X Factor, but I guess it'll help Wharton develop. Either way, Nelson at number five was me. Yeah, okay, Means was up here at number six for best QB. Okay, but we are going to be taking on the 12 and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the wild card, now led by Jordan Love, I think it said, which it seems like they always sign him in franchise. I don't know if the Packers just don't even try to bring him back or if he just doesn't want to stay there, but it's interesting either way. It's still only normal dev for him, but 85 overall now, 89 with morale. So I don't know if we're going to win this game, but we'll see. We have a first of many scenario though, our first playoff game of the rebuild. We will go play it cool. Y'all know me. And we have upgrades. Anything important? No. <laughs> I mean, Deshaun Curry's decent, but eh. but let's simulate this game out and I won't care if we lose. We don't really deserve to win, but we'll see. All right. We win 38 to 20. We, I mean, they were an 85 overall. I guess we're up to an 83 now, so it's close-ish, but they were at home too. I don't know if we should have smoked them. I mean, I'll take it. I kind of wish we got a playoff rivals scenario, but oh well. But give us those sweet, juicy staff points, please and thank you. And we have a hot opponent scenario for the Cowboys. Shocker, the Cowboys are good in simulation. <laughs> Couldn't imagine why, but let's simulate this game out and we will almost 100% lose this game. Now that I say that, we'll win somehow, but yeah, we get beat 31 to 23. Understandable. But hey, they were the much better roster, but it's unrealistic how good they are here. I mean, they haven't won a Super Bowl in what, like 30 years? They've already won two here. Make that three. Three in a row. Three for three. <laughs> Wait, so does that mean it's year three? No, it's year... Who won the other Super Bowl? There have been four. Can I check the history? Who won the other one? Or are they four for four? Oh, they lost the first one. That's why. Okay. They've been to four in a row and they've won.
won three of them. But we have some upgrades. I know one player that's going to be here. That is William Wharton, who gets three upgrade points. Now up to 95 power moves with morale. That's crazy. Can't wait for him to get two sacks next year. Pass rushers especially have such disgusting sophomore slumps in this game. In real life, I feel like that's the opposite. I feel like in real life, edge rushers, especially ones that are drafted high, sometimes do pretty well as a rookie and then really break out in year number two, maybe slow down a little bit in year three, and then get back to that level in year... That's... I don't know. Am I just overanalyzing it? Maybe. But that's what I feel... That's how I feel like it is in real life. In this game, it's bad in year one, unbelievably terrible in year two, and then maybe good in year three, and then fall back off in year four for pass rushers. But we have the fifth year options for Brian Cunningham and Will Means. These are two expensive contracts. One year 31.8 for Brian Cunningham. I mean, we'll pick it up. And then one year 44 mil for Will Means. Oh, I thought that said not accepted. I don't know why. You can't even not accept. I mean, you can press no, but it doesn't like reject it or anything, which I guess is a good thing, but I don't know. Just in case you accidentally press no. But enough yapping. Let's get to the draft. And honestly, I don't know what we can add at this point. We might really look for a running back and move Pierce back to receiver, but honestly, our receiving course kind of good. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Rudd, after a thousand yard season, should should have developed a little more than he has. Eh, I guess he barely has touchdowns, but like, who cares? Touchdowns as a stat are overrated, except for QBs, unless they're doing like crazy shit to get those touchdowns. Ooh, Banks went up to superstar. That's kind of nice. I also didn't even show that Hayward went up to superstar. I, I just forget things sometimes. <laughs> Does it still show? I mean, it was last year, so I highly doubt it. No, <laughs> whatever. But now let's get to the draft, finally. Oh God, it's so weird to not have the number one pick. I was just in the mindset that we would have the number one pick. So I was like, all right, which one of these guys at the top do I like the most? Do we like Jalen Smith, Junior Billups, uh, Nick Patterson? Uh, the answer is none of them. We can't get any of them. We pick at 26. So what do we want to do here? Well, there goes Sean Brackett, someone I was kind of looking at. That's tough. How does Alec Coleman look? Well, he's a pass protector with at best B pass block. So I'm going to, I'm going to guess not great. Yeah, not great from what I can tell. He doesn't look terrible, but ugh. I don't even know what I want. Like what, what could we really grade? Are we just kind of locked at an 83 overall for now? Maybe. Maybe a good left tackle because McDonald's been kind of terrible or a receiver or a running back because we'll probably move Pierce back to receiver eventually. Maybe a linebacker. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. D tackle. Like there are things we can kind of upgrade, but it's going to be hard to. We would have to make a good pick to immediately upgrade. Ooh, Jason. Uh, <laughs> Jason Green looks good. He's just not a very good route runner. This is DK Metcalf straight up <laughs> with insane vertical. Damn. I mean, this is rookie DK Met or like prospect DK Metcalf. He's become a very underrated route runner, which maybe I'm biased, but DK is very good. He gets so much hate because he wears a binky and all the manly muscle men hate him for it. Like, I don't know, judge a player on how good they are based on how good they are rather than what you think of their personality. I don't know. Shout out Terrence Williams, Cowboys receiver. I think I saw that he's trying to like make a comeback to like the UFL or something. I don't know. I always thought he was kind of underrated. I really don't know what to do with this pick though. Like we're at the unfortunate point where we, it's going to be hard to get better from draft. It just is. We need free agents and that's what I've limited myself to not be able to add. I don't know what to do. I, <laughs> nobody looks that good. A lot of players look good, but I'm just not like blown away or anything. Should I just do the boring thing and take a corner? Cause I know a corner will be good. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, wh what would we even do with a corner at this point? It'd be a backup. Fuck it. Let's take DK Metcalf 2.0. Jason Green. Welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, 93 speed. I don't know if he's going to be a great overall. He could be. Oh, I should have checked his release. He's going to be bad. He's going to be like a 72. Why did I take him? <laughs> Whatever. That's a bit of a throw pick, but I don't know what to do at this point. Oh, there goes Titus Jackson. So, uh, I hate the Vikings. Oh, my voice went out. <clears throat> I hate the Vikings, and apparently the Vikings hate me. Let's go with Daryl Dickerson. Sounds like a 1960s ass corner name, but let's take him. Okay, normal dev. Dope. We might take Clifton Holcomb. Uh, his awareness isn't that good. I'm worried about his awareness, but he isn't super slow for someone that's, you know, 233 as a running back. He's really good strength, which is only good somehow at 27 bench reps. He's elite jumping, which that's interesting. If, if this was a real life prospect, I am taking this guy in a heartbeat. But here, I don't know. I'm worried about the juke move, the awareness. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a chance. We kind of need a running back. Sure. Normal dev. Tough. How we feeling about another running back? I'll get a good one eventually. <laughs> Ooh, this dude's not even listed as a power back, but he has elite strength, elite jumping again. He could be really good. You know what? Why not? 
Okay, finally we get a hidden dev running back. I don't know how much that's gonna matter, but we'll see. All right, I'm getting tired. I'm gonna simulate the rest of these out. I think I'm recording the rest of this tomorrow. All right, well, this was uh, <laughs> certainly a draft. Oh, you know what? I don't wanna talk about it. You can, you can see it. This was something. Was it, hold on, I will talk about it. Was this a terrible draft class? I'm gonna try to defend myself. Was this a shit draft class or do I suck? No, there were good players early, but there were two Terrence Williams. I saw this earlier. That is weird. They're both spelled a little different. One's an E, one's an A, but okay, maybe I just suck. I don't know. That's tough. Whatever. At least I knew the picks were gonna be bad, though. But this is a look at the team we're gonna go with this year. I am a little conflicted. Still don't know if I want to start Pierce at receiver or running back. I mean, him at receiver, he's an 80 overall, which is fine. I thought he would develop more just from getting, like, receiving back upgrades and stuff, but he's been, like, an 80 overall at receiver for a while now. The only reason I don't want to put him at receiver is because it lowers us from an 82 to an 81, but it's not like he's been good at running back anyways, so I don't know. We're gonna start Barlow at running back, which I guess the bar is pretty low at running back with how Pierce has been playing, but hopefully he can do better. I guess we'll see. At least he has a dev trait. The defense is very colorful, though. Couple X factors, a few superstars, lots of stars. Now, will it play well is another question, but I'm surprised we're only an 81 overall on defense. I mean, I guess I understand, but eh, I don't know. Like 90, 83, 89, 84. I guess just some of these guys drag it down, but they aren't too much lower than like an 81. So I don't know. But yeah, I don't know what year we're in anymore. I've given up counting. Let's just get to the midseason point and we will see what our record is. Okay, uh, understandable. Um, <laughs> my fault, I guess. <laughs> What's happening? I mean, I know we're not the best team in the league, obviously. 0-7, huh? Do I need to trade someone away? Ooh, Barlow is terrible. I'll start row for the rest of the year. Brian Cunningham is doing well. <laughs> okay, I am gonna trade Derek McDonald. I tried him at center. He also fucking sucks at center. We're just gonna get rid of him. And then, let me guess. Oh, yep, Wharton, two sacks. I mean, he already has as many as I said he would on the year, but he's on pace for what, like five probably? Because we're through seven games or something. Yeah, we're 0-7. I know this game too well, and it's fucking stupid. <laughs> it is. Marquez Jones, at a 75 overall, has almost double as many sacks as Wharton, who is an 89 overall x fact And Jones has played a little over half of the snaps that Wharton has played. This game is great. There's nothing wrong with it. It's absolutely perfect. No complaints. Okay, well, let's <laughs> let's make a trade. Can't wait for him to play like an all-pro on whatever team we trade him to. But goodbye, Derek McDonald, who has a terrible center. I guess we'll send him to the team we're playing this week. I don't care. Give me a third round pick. Cool. And we will make, I guess, sure, Hugh Morrison at 6'5", 327. You'll be our center. Why not? Well, I can tell you why not, but why not? Have I ever told y'all how much I love this game? Oh, I guess I'm not allowed to sign free agents. I don't care. Welcome to the team, Lloyd Rainey. Absolutely massive addition. But hopefully things get uh, better in the second half of the year. I mean, actually, hopefully not. Hopefully we either go 10 and 7 or make the playoffs and go, or go 1 and 16 and get the number one pick. Those are the only two outcomes I want. Do we have any re-signings to make that are actually important? Dontrell Knox, I mean, how has he even played? He's actually been okay. I mean, past deflections wise, he only has two picks, but he's not interested, so I don't know. You know what? I might trade all these guys too, because like, they're not interested and it'll give us more draft capital. Let's do it. I'm going to trade all of them. Fuck it. We're going to trade Knox to the Broncos for a second round pick, which is maybe a bit much for a safety in a contract year, but I don't care. <laughs> We're going to trade Martin Smith to the Bears for a third round pick. We're going to trade Shepard to the Patriots for a fourth round pick. We are going to trade Pierce to the Falcons for a second round pick. We are going to trade Marquez Jones to the Eagles for a fourth round pick. And then I think that's all we're going to do. I don't, I mean, I guess someone could be interested in Curry, but I, I don't know. That's all we're going to do, but I'll refill. I, I guess I can't refill out the depth chart, but <laughs> let's get to the end of the season. All right, we go one in 16 in year number four. Four, five, whatever year we're in. I guess year five. Uh, we get beat <laughs> 35 to 10 by the six and 11 Colts. That's never a great thing, getting destroyed by a bad team. But Will Means was actually not too bad. 3,800 yards, 21 touchdowns, 14 picks. I'm not gonna put the blame on him. I don't know who to put the blame on. Isaiah Rowe, a deadly 450 yards, 3.1 per carry, three touchdowns, cool. Brian Cunningham though, 1,500 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, I wish he had more touchdowns. 
touchdowns, but oh well. Ooh, JJ Hawkins at right tackle was horrific. Our whole line was bad other than Chris Baker, who was terrible the first year of this rebuild. Alex Hayward led the team with 139 tackles, TFLs 15 for Wharton, 14 for Hobbs, 13 for Tatum, and sacks a whole five and a half for William Wharton as a 90 overall X factor. That's cool. That's realistic. Nothing wrong there. Four for Hobbs, three for, or three and a half for Curry, one and a half for <laughs> Tresman Tatum as an 83 overall. That makes sense. That's cool. And Najee Nelson had a had four interceptions, which he was actually pretty good. Only two pass deflections, though. And then Alex Hayward had one pick, and that was it. We had five total interceptions. So I think we might need a new defensive playbook. I don't know. I mean, I know we didn't have the best roster in the world, but good lord. Lamar Jackson wins MVP, though. I don't know if we're gonna have anyone anywhere for any awards. Jalen Hurts wins NFC Offensive Player of the Year. No Saints. Big... Well, I guess that's kind of surprising. Our receiver did really well. Micah Parsons wins Defensive Player of the Year. Again, shocker. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jermaine Flowers for the Packers. Barlow at number five. I'm surprised. He was kind of terrible. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jalen Smith, someone I was thinking about taking. Or, well, was I? I can't remember. I remember him. I don't remember if I thought about taking him, though. No Saints up there. I don't even know if rookies got playing time on our defense. But, uh, yeah, that was a season. Let's forget that ever happened. And I think we'll have the number one pick. And I think we're going to have to take it. Because we're at the point where we have a lot of pretty good players. I think we just need more, like, superstar talent though so we'll see what we can add in the draft hopefully someone good that's an interesting super bowl the jets beat the rams 27 21 okay <laughs> sure and let's see i highly doubt it if this ever wants to simulate but i highly doubt it but is there anyone i want to bring back uh, i guess we'll pick up the fifth year for tatum we might even trade tatum he has been horrendous the first year he had five and a half or five sacks which is okay but he probably should have had more in what i would guess was like a thousand snaps and and then the last two years total in full starting snaps, he had three total sacks in probably close to 2,000 snaps. So that's realistic, thanks EA. I don't know, I might work out a trade, we'll see, but let's get to the draft. But here we are in the draft, and I'ma be honest, I don't know what I wanna do. Um, There are a few early projected receivers. The problem is none of them look great. They all look good, like Rasheem, Rasheem McKinley looks very good. He's just not very fast. Will Roberts looks good. Eh, he he might be better. He actually might be good. I don't know. I can't tell. His catch in traffic sucks and his deep route isn't that good, but I, I don't know. Oh, I'm definitely not taking him. I didn't check his speed. 466 speed. Uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Well, that sucks because that's the main thing I wanted in this draft. What does Tavon Cooper look? What does he look like? He looks pretty good. His medium route is terrible. His route running in general, other than deep route, sucks. We might take him later though. Wow, shocker. All the tackles look terrible. Who would have guessed? Is there just nobody good here? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I know there is. I just couldn't tell you who it is. Tommy McCoon is probably pretty good. I don't know. His block shed kind of sucked. His combine was really good. I don't know. I, I don't know what to do with this pick. I didn't want to trade it down, but I might have to. I mean, we could go with a corner, but why? This dude's listed as a man corner, but he has A zone, but only B man. That's interesting. He's probably really good, but we don't need another corner. I mean, we need a, we need a safety, but we have four corners. We can move someone to... All right, I might trade this pick down honestly i didn't want to but there isn't anyone good like straight up i don't know what i'm gonna trade this pick for though should i trade it for like someone's entire draft class how about the lions all right well this is a goofy trade i don't know about realism but it's kind of funny we're trading down two spots pretty much the lions entire draft i don't know what the point of that is because that doesn't really you know make it any more clear what we want to do maybe mckinley was good if they took him at number one i don't know he didn't look that good though and then there goes mccoon two players i was looking at that sucks well that doesn't necessarily necessarily mean they're good, but I don't know. Larry Morgan's still available. I don't know if he's great, but he looks really good. Somehow, holy shit, dude, this might be the worst combine, like, grading I've ever seen. He ran a 4-3-2 and a 4-3-1 and only has great speed and solid acceleration. I don't think this dude's that good, like, straight up. At least Dalvin McNeil has good speed and elite acceleration. I, I would say that's better than great and solid, because great and solid's probably, like, 94 speed 
speed and 90 89 acceleration probably 90 this is probably like 92 speed and 95 acceleration should i take him i could i don't know we just don't need corner <laughs> how about defensive tackles are any of them good uh not until the second round yeah i know this is gonna be a throw pick but let's go with dalvin mcneil sure hidden dev at least 92 speed 94 excel that was a pretty close guess i mean even worse excel than i expected and I, I thought i was being pessimistic with 95 apparently not i don't know what elite is apparently this game slowly wears on me throughout rebuilds i don't know if y'all like recognize that watching these i mean it's probably pretty obvious but i'm realizing i sound more and more depressed as i go on <laughs> i mean i would like to think it's mostly ironic but i don't know i just wish there was a good football video game honestly but here let's go with denzel bayer elite strength 40 reps can't wait for that to be 90 strength somehow but <laughs> let's take him that's 95 didn't the guy i took with like 43 reps have 93 strength i don't know maybe not but he's probably good this guy looks really good can't wait for him to allow seven sacks at right guard i guess we'll go with cortez allen let me let me get a better look at some of the defensive tackles yeah we'll go with cortez allen he looks good sure normal dev all right we're taking another defensive tackle <laughs> luckily we have a ton of second round picks LaShawn parker are you good eh maybe justin ruiz or cruz i don't know how i read ruiz doug dane i don't know they all look similar <laughs> brian bird he has no pass rush ability but he's strong justin cruz welcome to the team he has hidden dev okay cool chauncey kirkpatrick he looks good other than his coverage ability he's also pretty slow i don't know <laughs> Ooh. okay jacoby spence actually might be good elite strength at least good speed and good acceleration sure fuck normal dev all right cool tavon cooper's still here i guess we'll take him i don't know if he's great but we'll take him normal dev all right dope this game hates me any good running backs maybe <laughs> ah just what i was looking for a four six five speed running back that sounds great Ooh. whoa tito martinez which is a fire name i feel like i've said that five times in this rebuild but elite jumping sure good speed great strength lots of a's for like power back ratings i guess sure all right normal dev cool oh yeah we need a lineback turner as pursuits kind of terrible graham bowman sure cool all right well i'll make maybe one or two more picks and i will see y'all for the draft recap heading into what is possibly the final year all right well that's not great uh <laughs> our first two picks were actually decent dalvin mcneil is an 81 overall he's pretty good he'll start and denzel bayer is a 77 he's pretty good not a scheme fit but should be decent now other than that <laughs> not a great draft i mean a lot of okay players but nothing great tito martinez is actually pretty good out of 77 but who would have guessed no dev trait kill me and yeah that's about it i took starks was my last pick so yeah that's something i mean these are like technically good value for where we got these players but like none of them are gonna get any playing time okay this was legitimately kind of a bad draft class kj hurst was pretty good i didn't even look at him oh well the corner we got was good anyways yeah that was a draft class for sure Let's get into your six. I don't know some year it's a year but here we are heading into what is probably the final year of the rebuild we didn't exactly have the same success that we had in the last one i don't know if it's a playbook issue or what so just in case i went with kind of the cheese playbooks kansas city definitely is i don't know what a good defensive playbook is like genuinely if you know a good one let me know let me know like a good 4-3 one and a good 3-4 one because i don't know half the time i'm like oh this one worked well for this team and i use it and, it and then we have the worst defense in the league so I, I don't know. So we'll see how these playbooks work. The Bills one works pretty well for me, but it works much, much better when I have like a great defensive roster. If I don't, it kind of goes terribly, but we'll see what happens. Speaking of defensive roster though, it's actually pretty good. It's not as high of an overall as our offense, but it looks good on paper. Again, very colorful. We have a great corner group, a pretty great D-line that happens to play terribly. Who would have guessed? Our linebacking core isn't amazing, but Hayward's pretty good. Our safety duo is all right it's young at least how old is goldson 23 yeah he's still really good or really young and his name's goldson not goldson i'm this shit is wearing on me mentally i'm getting stupider as i do this rebuild i don't know why i also moved rudd to running back he's actually a pretty decent overall there he's also 6 4 217 which is an interesting running back build to say the least but we'll try it i never said this was a realistic rebuild so we'll see but let's just get straight to the end of your number six and we will see what happens. I don't know.
don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> before I show how we did in year number four, year number four, I'm faded. Year number six, let's go over the season stats, shall we? Uh, Will Means, <laughs> Will Means was actually really good. 4,200 yards, 29 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Nice completion percentage. Caleb Rudd was something. Jarius McMillan actually led the team with 1,000 yards, only five touchdowns. Roy Rudolph was our number two receiver with 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. Oh yeah, we're the Chiefs playbook. Cunningham did nothing. Jason Green was actually our number three receiver with 939 yards, 12 touchdowns. Does the Chiefs playbook just not use the number one receiver? I thought it did. I don't know, whatever. The blocking was actually pretty good. The only one I benched was Mooney at the midseason. He allowed four sacks and 500 snaps, so we put in Baker, who did better there at left guard. I thought the O-line was going to be our downfall this year, especially in a more pass-heavy offense, but it was actually really good. Alex Hayward led the team with 127 tackles, 105 for Tanner Bender. We had a lot of tackles for loss. 22 from Wharton led the team, and Wharton actually finally had a good year. 10 sacks for him, 6.5 for Tresman Tatum, which is, I mean, that's not great, but overall a pretty good year. 4.5 for Hobbs, and I think this was our downfall. I think we only forced four total turnovers. Yeah, we didn't get a single fumble recovery. That was pretty much our downfall on the season, because I should have I should have predicted our season, because in my head, I pictured 6 and 11, and that is exactly what we finished. So, at least we made the playoffs in this rebuild, but that's just unlucky. Oh, Butler has X-Factor. That's interesting. But yeah, the thing is, I don't know how much better I can make this team. I mean, our problem was interceptions. Look at our secondary. It's an average overall of probably like an 86, 85. Nah, you know what? I'm gonna do the math. I'm petty. Let me, let me do the math. Yeah, it's an average of an 86. That was a pretty good guess. Assuming these players actually had, you know, their neutral morale, not a minus one from morale. So I don't know. I, <laughs> I would almost consider this a success, even though we didn't win a rebuild I, or win a rebuild, win a Super Bowl. I mean, this is a pretty good overall team. We're an 86 now. We developed a lot throughout the year. What, three whole overall? That's pretty good for one season, especially when we already have a good roster. Now, I guess it isn't really the best team in the league. It's probably still one of the worst, but guess what? They weren't doing a challenge where they could only draft players. So I don't know. No Super Bowl, but I would say almost a playoff caliber team. I mean, the Vikings only have an 84. What was their record? And the Bears only have an 85. The Vikings went 9-8 and eight with an 84 overall team, and they probably even have positive morale. The Bears weren't great, but they were they did better than us. <laughs> I don't know. This is a certified Madden simulation moment. And yeah, if we had positive instead of negative morale, we could even be close to an 87, maybe even an, like an 88. I don't know, man. Either way, this was fun. It was definitely a harder challenge than the last one, but honestly, I think we had the same overall team in the last rebuild. This might even be better, again, because of morale. We actually did well in that last year, almost won a Super Bowl. I don't know. It's, cl it's close, at least. But unfortunately, that is going to be the end of today's rebuild. Disappointing end, but if I want to get this video out, I have to end it here. <laughs> but I really hope y'all enjoyed regardless. I love doing stupid shit like this, so I, I hope y'all do too. But again, like the video, 2,500 likes for another zero overall rebuild. I mean, we gained 86 overall throughout this rebuild, so I think that's pretty good. But subscribe for more, and let me know any fun ideas down below. But thank you all so much for watching, and with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.